Reactions from the declaration made by Arawa youth in Kaduna are yet to die down. Southern leaders converged on Lagos to review the state of the nation. Elder statesman Ayo Adebanjo hosted the closed-door meeting, which lasted for about four hours. Afterwards, representatives briefed the media on deliberations. Arewa youth and their sponsors draw the quick notice given to the people of Southeast. As failure to do so will be taken as an ultimatum to the entire, entire South to quit their region. And any attack against anybody from the South, any section of the South, will be considered an attack against the entire Southern Nigeria. We therefore advise the federal government to take seriously and live up to the primary responsibility of any government, which is to protect the lives and property of every citizen of Nigeria, wherever they may reside. What has happened so far, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, not effecting the arrest of, uh, of the young people, of the, young, of the youth who have made this, uh, in spite of the other the uh, Kaduna State Governor and the Supreme General Police is clearly not giving us enough confidence and therefore we call the government to immediately ensure that it gives us to responsibility. And Afenifere Chieftain Femi Okuromu has urged all Yorubas and other Southerners in the North to come back home. He said that the quit notice is not directed at the Igbos alone and advised Yorubas in the North to move home too to avoid violence that might erupt after the three-month ultimatum given by Northern youths. Philosophy lecturer Danny Kira joins us now in, uh, um, on the news hour in the studio here to talk more about this. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, um, the uh, Fenifere, the Yoruba um, uh, cultural um, you know, group has also you know, given you know, an order that the northern youth should um, you know, refrain or retract you know, that order. Do you think that this is likely to happen? Well, it, it is difficult for anybody to say it will happen or it will not happen. The only way we can tell whether it will happen is when it is done. If it is retracted, then we can say it has happened. But that it will happen, that we cannot... There are no indices to suggest that that is likely going to happen. But I, I, I think that, yes, what the, the Pan-Yoruba group now, the, the Afeniferia and the rest of them have just done, clearly tells the government that it is not just an issue of, you know, Arawa youth. Mm. This is a national issue. You know, because... The quick notice ultimatum was given to the southeasterners. Mm. Those who are now talking are the southwesterners. So that tells you that it is not just a thing of, you know, the Igbos and the Arawa youth. And in any case, there was an order that those behind the quit notice should be arrested. I don't know how many of them have been ar arrested, mm -hmm. and I, I I don't know if they are spirits, <laughs> you know, because we are talking of you know a youth movement that has been well established. Mm. The leaders are known, and I am very convinced that even at the point of the meeting, the police should be aware. Let's assume, that, let me not say they were aware, but at least they should be aware. So how come it is so difficult to track down on those who are the leaders of this group, or some of those you know, key figures of these groups, for them to at least be apprehended? That has not happened. And, now, and they made reference to, uh, Chief Okromo made reference to what happened in Oshun State, yes. where there was problem between Yoruba youths and then Hausa youths, yes. and very quickly, the Inspector General of Police you know, swooped in, yes. and you know, some arrests you know, were made. In this case, even the state governor has demanded the arrest of these people, and yet the IG, <laughs> yes, the IG has not been able to do that. Right. That tells you that it is not just a thing of the Arewa youth. There are forces behind, you know, this youth. They are just, you know, parading the youth to suggest that, I ah, it is children who did this. Mm. I am very convinced that there are elders behind them. 
Okay, well, if there are elders behind them, this statement, my concern is the fact that we are beginning to see statements from different uh, uh, parts or ethnic groups, and uh, these uh, are weighty statements that uh, one can really take lightly, but the impact to, uh, on the nation is where my focus is right now. Yes, the, the, the impact obviously will not be palatable. Now, but, but again, we need to, you know, you know, look at this thing holistically. Not just a question of, you know, the ultimatum given by the IRA youth. It is as a result, according to them, of the protests, the demands by the Yubos for a state of Biafra. Now, okay, since you've been agitated, you want to have your own state. It is time for you to now leave this area, just go home, mm. prepare for your state and wait for it. Now, are we saying that? The Arawa youth are equally giving others who are not Nigerians, perhaps, the same ultimatum to quit the area. Supposing we have a state called Biafra or a country called Biafra, mm. are you saying that Biafrans will not be you know, uh, eligible to travel, to settle in any other part of the world outside their own area? Mm. Because what you are saying in essence is that since you are no longer in Nigeria, mm. by virtue of creation of Biafra, assuming that was done, then you cannot stay in the north east. I mean, it's uh, in the, north. uh, the northern part of the country. It equally means that no other person from any other country should stay in the north. But that is not the case. They issue their ultimatum to just an ethnic group. Right, Dan. Uh, well, if, if you look at the way the turn that this thing is taking at the moment, are we about to experience a repeat of the 1966-1967 in a program where there was some sort of ethnic you know, cleansing. I, I have my fears. I, d I doubt if we'll get to that point. I doubt if we'll get to that. It, but, but the way and manner, you know, the government is going about it and some other very important persons. You see, because you always hear things such as the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. Negotiable. And you begin to wonder if Nigeria is actually united. And you begin to wonder equally whether it is a crime to negotiate So this unity. reflects the state of the nation? Of course. Of course. You see, for there to be unity, there must be negotiation. Because there are several, you know, forces that can bring about unity. Unity could come through marriage. Unity could come through law. You know, constitutional provisions. Unity could come through, you know, uh, love. It could be by blood. Mm. Which of them do we really have? Which of all this is, is cementing us together? A big question then. Are you getting? So there is a big challenge. So even the question of if we are united, we will not get to this point. We are truly not united. That is why we have all this agenda. You find somebody who would be in the head of government, and because he's head of government, only his own part of the country mm. enjoys, you know, the 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 badges of uh, office. A united country will not behave like that. America is far bigger than Nigeria, and yet governors goes round. All right. When will we get there? So it is government that has actually prepared this kind of situation. It's not just the youth. Mm -hmm. the youth are the ones saying it, but it is a kind of government we've had over time that has led us to this point. If we have been government that is actually responsive to the yearnings of the, and the aspirations of the people, we certainly not get to this we'll point. We'll find ourselves there. Well, philosophy lecturer Daniel Kerry, thanks for your time on TVC News Hour. Thank you. It's always my pleasure.